All right, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Raymond Cannon. I am the band director over at Indian Trails Junior High School. I am joined by Ms. Sydney Toika, who is the orchestra director, and Mr. Sean Les, who's a representative from Clinton and Fabish for our presentation tonight. If you have any questions that were not submitted to the Google form earlier today, please type them in the chat to the right of the video and we'll answer them to the best of our ability. Uh, what I'm going to do today is run through a presentation that was put together based on some of the questions that were presented to us through the Google form. Once again, if you have other questions, feel free to post them on the side chat. So beginning available instrumentation for this year for fifth grade hasn't changed a whole lot. For band, we're offering flute, oboe, clarinet, saxophone, French horn, trumpet, trombone, baritone, and percussion. For orchestra, we're offering violin, viola, cello, and bass. One of the questions that was brought up, if we offer piano lessons or guitar lessons, at this time, we do not offer lessons for either of those instruments for fifth grade setting. Um, so be aware of that if you are trying to sign up for those instruments for fifth grade. Uh, the schedule this year, there was a lot of questions put through the Google form about how it's going to work for the schedule versus the uh, traditional versus how we're going to do it via remote or hybrid schedule. So traditionally, students would have a 30 minute pull out lesson every week at their home school. Uh, that would occur one time during the week and it would be with like instruments. And then they would also have a one hour full rehearsal at Indian Trail Junior High with their performing group. Orchestra is traditionally on Tuesday, band is traditionally on Thursday in room N107, which is the band room here at Indian Trail from 345 to 445. Students would also participate in two concerts a year on their instruments at ITJHS. However, this year, now this is pending board approval. So this is our plan for teaching in the remote and hybrid model. Now due to the hybrid model and the way it is set up at the school, there is no way for us to do push out lessons. So we will be doing remote uh, teaching even during the hybrid model for the beginning instrumental program. So the way it will work is students will receive a one hour long virtual lesson each week in a small group setting. These lessons will be scheduled after school hours from three to four o'clock. In these groups, students will participate in breakout rooms and director-led activities. So they may be working with the full instrument group. They may be just working individually and having other groups work in breakout rooms. The teacher will also use Google Classroom and Essential Elements Interactive to push out supporting material to individual students. Now the plan here is that the teacher for the fifth grade program would record individual videos that would address specific student needs, for instance, how to hold an instrument, uh, specific techniques on a given instrument that will be pushed out to individual students based on the need they have when they are playing their instrument. This will be evaluated during those large group lessons and then pushed out during the day when students are at school. So that way they can see it at their convenience when they're at home. There will be no large group rehearsals at IT until we are in phase five of the governor's plan and the school board approves, just like there will be no traditional concerts until we are in phase five of the governor's plan and the school, and the school board approves such activities. Now, that being said, just because there's no traditional concerts, the directors may choose to do alternatives, whether it be a virtual concert or some sort of video concert that we can push out, but it will not be an in-person traditional concert that we have been used to the last few years. Timeline for instruction. So this is uh, what we have been informed by the school board. As of right now, since we are still pending approval for the program and for everything to go on, uh, based on numbers, the information uh, of numbers and how many parents we have involved will be shared with the superintendent and the school board next week at our meeting. And then it will, once approved by the school board, we will contact you via email. We have already done this a couple times to confirm your registration. So if you haven't gotten an email for me to confirm your registration, just shoot me an email and my contact information will be at the end of this presentation. All right, fees associated with the program. So there are three unique fees associated with the program. There's a district enrollment fee of $100. This will be billed to school access accounts. So you can pay it through your school access just like you do any school related fees. There will be an instrument rental fee if you are renting an instrument. And there's ensemble, ensemble material fee, which we'll we also discuss in a few slides. All right, so instrument rental. So. We are planning an instrument sign-up event. Once again, we're waiting for full board approval before we schedule this event. 
we will disseminate the information once the superintendent and the board approves it and we will send it out via email. All right, rental prices. So one of the questions that was brought up is whether or not the rental prices of instruments is going to be adjusted due to the fact that we're learning virtually. The cost of the instrument does not include the cost of instruction. The rental company is a completely separate company that we work with. They provide a service for us. So the costs that they incur are the same cost no matter what. So what they offer to us is a, uh, they call it an introductory period. It's a four month period <clears throat> that covers, uh, basically students could try out an instrument. If something goes wrong with the instrument or they don't like the instrument, or for whatever reason, it's just not working for them, that's usually when we'll make adjustments to the instrument. I have talked to QNF and they have assured me that they will adjust the day of the start of the four months to when we start our virtual instruction. So even if you get your instrument rental in October, if we don't start until mid-October, your, your four month period will not start until we start virtual instruction, all right? There are a couple different levels depending on the type of instrument. So for the band side, flute, clarinet, trumpet, trombone, percussion, $72 covers the first four months and then $39 a month after the four month rental period. Alto saxophone and oboe are $119 for the introductory period, 53 a month thereafter. French horn is $149 a month and $63, or sorry, for the first four months and then $63 for the thereafter. For orchestra, Violin and viola are $69 for the first four months and then $25 a month thereafter. Cello, $99 for four months and then $35 a month thereafter. And bass, finally, $156 for four months and $59 thereafter. Now, in band, we do not do sizing in orchestra. There is sizing associated with certain instruments. We will tell you at this registration event and the rental event sorry, the rental event, not the registration event. Uh, when we do the rental event and you come to rent an instrument, we will tell you at that time what size instrument you need. So that way we can adjust them to your student. <clears throat> Orchestra, you will step up sizes as you go along. So even though you might start on a half size violin, you may move up to a full size depending on how far you grow. All right. Moving on, ensemble kits. So this is specific band related stuff and then we have an orchestra one after. So for band, we require things in order to make our instruments work. So woodwind instruments, you're gonna, with the exception of flute, you're gonna require a reed of some sort in order to make the sound on your instrument. So all of our woodwind instruments, which would be oboe, clarinet, alto sax, those three instruments all require a box of reeds or oboe for two reeds, a reed case which protects those reeds and protects the investment. Uh, for oboe, we require a reed soaker and then a music stand and a book, all right? For clarinet and alto sax, we also had a mouthpiece patch, which is a small rubber patch that goes on top of mouthpiece that helps with some of the vibration that the students feel when they play the mouthpiece and, and can help with the jitters when they're playing. For flute, you do not need any of those items. You just need a music stand and a book, all right? For brass instruments this year, we are requiring a burp. So you are going to need a burp, which is a small plastic device that goes on your instrument, allows us to buzz into the burp while simultaneously fingering or using our slide for our brass instruments. You will also, also need oil, a cleaning snake, grease, and finally a music stand and book. Now, the reason why we're requiring music stands for everyone is because since we are going to be doing virtual learning at home, we need to make sure students will be set up for success. And in order to do that, they need to have a dedicated place where they can have their music stored at a proper height so that way they can be properly positioned to alleviate any problems further down the road. For percussion, they are gonna need drumsticks, xylophone mounts, music stand, and book. The percussion kit will come with a bell kit as well as a drum pad. There is also later in the year, another percussion kit that we would traditionally use uh, when they come to the junior high to do playing here. However, due to our current circumstances, we did not include that because we are right now unsure of when, if we are going to get back into Indian Trail with students. All right, for the instrument ensemble kit for orchestra, 
All the instruments either come with a sponge or rock stop polishing cloth, music stand, and a book that costs you $30.19. All right, so these are some other questions that have come up that were not directly answered in the presentation. So first question, is it difficult to learn a new instrument virtually? Um, it will be challenging to learn a new instrument regardless of whether it's gonna be virtual or in person, but we are confident that we can provide an environment that will encourage student growth and success. We are a very creative bunch here and the beginning orchestra and band director are not alone. They're, we will help them as the IT directors and the high school directors will help as well to ensure that everyone is successful. So whatever we can do to get those students to be successful, we will, we will move earth to make it happen. All right, will the prices of instruments be offset due to virtual learning? As I discussed before, the prices of instruments and material do not cover the cost of lessons. So as a result, the costs will not be adjusted. Um, the instruments that QNF provides are high quality instruments. They still have to pay the same amount for their instruments regardless of what's going on in the current economy. So unfortunately that cost is then passed on. They have however been very accommodating to us and the fact that they gave us a price list at the end of last year and they have not deviated from that price list. So it's really nice that in the changing world, the price of instruments, at least for the beginners, has not gone up a lot this year, which is really nice. All right, will the rental cost be delayed until we can find out if children do well virtually? Uh, once again, I talked about how QNF offers the, that four month introductory rental period. That should cover the cost of the, inter, uh, the instrument for that period. So you won't be making monthly payments during that time. It is just a one time um, purchase for that four months. All right, will the $100 district enrollment fee be waived? I did talk to district about this, specifically our district office. At this time, we have not been made aware of any plan to waive that enrollment fee or change that enrollment fee. I was told, however, that if it is a problem, that district will work with parents to set up a payment plan on a case by case basis. So if that is something that is a problem, you need to let the directors know so we can talk to district and get that figured out for you. All right, how do we offer guitar lessons? There was another one put in right before the meeting asking for piano lessons. We do not at this time offer guitar or piano lessons in the ASD4 instrumental program. That's all the way from fifth grade all the way through eighth grade. All right, my contact information. So if you have any further questions that were not answered in this, and I will get to the ones that popped up on YouTube here really quickly. Um, if for whatever reason you have any questions or you have any concerns, please, please, please contact me at rcanon at asd4.org and I will do my best to get them answered in a timely manner. And if I can't answer them, I will get you to the appropriate person that can get them answered for you. All right, briefly, let me look here. Um, just saying, I'm going to answer some of these comments because I believe after the uh, presentation is over, they will get deleted. So I just want to make sure. Uh, if you have some of the kit items, can you buy the remaining kit items individually? Yes. So if you have them in good shape, for instance, some of the percussionists already have uh, older siblings who have the different drumsticks and stuff like that or a music stand at home, you do not need to purchase those items as long as they're in good working order. Um, put them on the phone. If you've already filled out the paperwork and, and paid QNF, you are good to go. You don't have to do anything else. So uh, to answer this question about specific instrument trial. So uh, if your son's, my son's a fifth grade, is there going to be a class where you select the instrument that we would play? So as of right now, traditionally, we would have a, what we call like an instrument petting zoo where students would come and try the different instruments. But due to COVID-19 restrictions, we cannot pass an instrument around a class with different students. So as of right now, we are not going to be doing a um, instrument petting zoo. What we are telling students is that they can try an instrument and if it doesn't work, we are allowing them to switch. All right, but we are encouraging them to kind of push through it to fifth grade. Um, you are allowed to buy your own instrument. However, I would encourage you that if you are going to buy an instrument to please check with the directors first because some of the instruments are what we call instrument-shaped objects. For instance, I can go on Amazon right now and buy a trumpet for $30. The problem
problem is that no music shop will work on that instrument. So if my son bends a valve or um, it comes and it doesn't work the way it should or something like that, specifically those instruments will not be worked on in music shops. If you take them in music stops, they will not work on them because the problem is they are not built correctly and most of the time they will fall apart. And then if the music store breaks it when they're fixing it, they have to replace it. So most music stores will not work, work on them. More specifically, most of them, I will tell you from personal experience, do not come in working order. So when they come, there's usually like for the brass, for instance, I can speak specifically because I bought a trumpet off Amazon once just to try it when I was in my early teens. And uh, it didn't, the valves did not move at all. All the slides were frozen. It, it didn't work at all. It ended up being a really nice lamp, but that was about it. So if you are going to buy an instrument, please, please, please double check with the director. You can shoot me an email at rcanadaasd4. We do have some alternatives. If you are looking to buy, we have some companies we work with that can give you really decent prices that we've quoted out. So please check with us before you buy an instrument, just because we don't want you to waste your money. That, that $40 violin might look great, but when you have to buy four of them because they keep breaking, that $40 isn't looking so great anymore. All right? All right. Uh, with that, it looks like that answered all the questions that are currently on the YouTube chat. And let me check to make sure no more were submitted. Um, one more was su submitted as far as when band will start. Once again, I talked about that. We're waiting for board approval and superintendent approval before we can give you an official start date. Um, one last question that came up here, does the rental place work on the instrument? And where will you have to take? So if you are renting from QNF, and I'm going to turn this over to Sean real quick, and he can talk specifically about the um, the warranty and the, the stuff you can get from QNF. But QNF does work on their own instruments um, and they fix them. So Sean, I'm going to go ahead and let me stop sharing my screen so that way they can see you. Let me do this here and then drag this over. All righty. So you can go ahead, if you could go ahead and answer Sean just about how the, uh, the warranty works. And how, I know you guys also have a program uh, that covers the cost of repairs. If you could talk a little bit about that, please. Yeah, yeah. We call it our maintenance and replacement coverage. Um, best part is it's not an extra cost for this coverage. It's included in your trial, your four month trial period that we you know had just been discussed and the payments that take place after that. So you're automatically getting it when you rent the instrument. And the best part about our coverage is it covers that instrument for anything that can happen to it. Um, if it needs to be cleaned, simply just cleaned or fixed, we cover that. If it, um, in terms of replacement, if it is lost, if it is stolen, or even if it is super damaged beyond repair, say a truck rolled over it, and I've actually seen that happen, um, we will completely replace the instrument for you, no extra cost. And then um, that, that pretty much covers it, uh, I think. Oh, also another thing that is covered by the program while your instrument is in one of our shops is that we also can bring out a loaner, provide a loaner for you while your instrument is being fixed or replaced. Um, our rep visits the school weekly. So he's there to deliver loaners, he's there to pick up repairs. All you'd have to do is submit it to your director at school. Obviously I know during COVID time, it kind of gets a little, is a little different right now. Um, most of the time we are doing some of our Quillen parcel services. We've called it our QPS runs where deliveries and pickups can be made at houses that is continuing. Or I mean, as if the instrument can also be brought to one of our locations, our brewery's location is about 20 to 20, 25 minutes south of Addison, just down 83. So, yeah, but completely covered. Um, it's really one of the best parts of the program. So, all right. Some other questions that came up on here, real quick. Uh, so, the form you need to fill out is if you go to join.asd4music.org, you can sign up there if you have not already. If you've already done that, you're already good. And I will share that with you in a second. Uh, if instruments need repaired or tuned. So, what we are going to do is we will we will set up something with the beginning directors where they can come out to schools on certain days. Um, and once again, that's going to be a pending school, school board approval where we can have some of those instruments switched out for loaners if we need and get those instruments sent in if they are covered under warranty. Um, and then we can also do tuning there. Um, if you have an instrument, so if you have an instrument, I would email the director or you can email me and just tell me kind of what the name of the instrument is. There should be a brand name on it and we can go over like just some pictures. Normally what we would do is have you bring the instrument in and we would look over it 
and tell you how it, it is. Um, but it's like for for really for band, it's mostly we're talking like name brands. So like a Yamaha, a Bach, uh, something like along those lines are usually what we recommend. But once again, just shoot me an email um, at rcanonac4.org. If you can include some pictures and some names, you can go there. As far as can you go to any QNF store? So Sean, if they are having an issue with their instrument, can they bring it to any of the QNF stores? Yes, they can come to any location. Okay, so if you're having any issues with a QNF's owned instrument or a rented instrument, you can take it to a any QNF store. All right, and we will post all of this information along with the video, our slideshow, and I will also directly reply to some of the questions. Um, after this, we'll post it on the website. We should have everything up for you guys tomorrow. All right. Uh, one last thing before I go, let me share with you what the website looks like, just for those of you who have not seen it. Uh, let's see here. Sorry, I've got to click a lot of buttons to switch over to this here. Okay. So if you go to join.asd4music.org, it will forward you to our Google site for registration. This is our Google site for registration. All you need to do are two things. So you need to fill out the form if you haven't already done so. So there's an English form and a Spanish form. They're both the same form. One's just in Spanish and one's in English. And then you either need to rent an instrument or purchase an instrument. Now really quickly, I'm gonna talk one last time about renting an instrument. The reason why we suggest renting an instrument is because as we know, kids aren't always the most responsible. If you rent an instrument with QNF, pretty much everything is going to be covered. You don't have to worry about paying any like out of the normal fees for anything, everything will be covered. So I would strongly urge you to work with QNF. And the reason why we use QNF is because they send reps to our schools and they work really closely with us to ensure that students have instruments and everything they need to be successful. All right, will there be lessons for students with no experience? So uh, at this point, we always start every year, just assuming that everyone is at the same level with no experience and then we kind of work our way up from there. So what we will do before we even start with the instruments is we'll go over some basics of note reading and some basics of rhythm so that way we can make sure that students are all kind of brought up to the same level because we are working with seven different elementary schools and seven different general music classes. We wanna make sure that students all have a good kind of uh, base to start with. All right, so if you have already filled out the form, I will be sending a email to everyone once again in a couple days, once I have a couple more people who have signed up, uh, showing who has filled out the form and who is ready to go. And then if you have any other questions after that, you can just let me know from there. Uh, lessons will be remote, yes. All right, are there any other questions? Uh, yes, I will once again include the website for registration, but once again, it was also sent out to students. It's on all of their uh, Google Classrooms right now. And there was also a uh, flyer that was sent out and Ms. Toika also just posted it in the comments. So once again, it is join.asb4music.org. So as long as you can go there, you can do it. Uh, da, da, da. Okay, so if you've already rented an instrument and you did not fill out the form, yes, you need to fill out the form because that is our way of knowing who actually has an instrument who is going to sign up. So the rental of the instrument through QNF, they'll send us an instrument, but if you're not signed up for lessons, we won't know who to give it to. Oh, hold on, let me click show, sorry, there we go. And I will also post a direct link here. All right, if you've signed up already, we haven't assigned any of the fees yet through Skyward. We are waiting until mid-November uh, to give those lists to district, mainly because we're waiting for everything to get going because some students might find that they need to be in a different ensemble or it's that we might add more students or it might not work for them. So we wait until we get things going a little bit so that way we don't have to process as many changes. All right, I am going to cut our other friends loose. I'm gonna stay on for a couple minutes 
and answer any other questions that come up. So thank you very much, Mr. Les, for coming on from Quinlan and Fabish. And thank you, Ms. Twyka, for coming on and helping out as well. I'm going to stick around, I believe, and answer a couple more questions that come up on here. If you guys have any more questions, go ahead and ask. All right, uh, for the rental form, so ship to home or ship to school. So uh, right now we are going to be doing everything ship to home. We have Quinlan Porch Service, which we are also probably gonna be utilizing. We're waiting until we do the full registration event in order to find out what we're planning on doing and have district approval. If we do the drive up in person event, we are planning on actually handing out the instruments there when you sign up. So once again, we're just waiting on the, the board to give us approval to go on that we, before we fully commit to anything. But we do have those three different options. But you are very welcome. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna put my contact information one more time as soon as I can find where I put the tab here. Here's my contact information one more time. If you have any specific questions, please, please, please let us know. Uh, let's see here, a couple more that came up. Should I contact QNF to see if they can ship to my home? Uh, you are welcome to. If you are renting before we have our sign-up event, you can do that if you would like your instrument ahead of time. The only thing is I would be cautious because if students don't know how to put them together sometimes, there can be issues where they put them together incorrectly and cause damage. Um, the music stand, where do we get one or rent one? So a music stand, you can get one from Clement and Fabish. <clears throat> They're $15.90 on their website. Um, you can also get one from any music store that sells one. Our rep, so the reason why we use the Q&F ones is they're actually really sturdy. They come as one piece unit, so they, they kind of bolt together. So that way you don't end up losing a piece or bending another piece. Um, as long as you have a usable music stand at home, however, that would be fine. Uh, traditionally, everything is shipped to the school. However, due to the COVID stuff going on right now, they're giving schools the option of how they would like instruments delivered. Once again, we have a couple different options at our disposal, but we're waiting for board approval before we figure out which one we are doing. All righty, everybody, thank you very much for stopping by today. If you have any further questions, please, please, please contact me at rcannon at asd4.org. Thank you.